Okay, so what I want to what comes to mind to talk about today is um, what I would like to do is is to sort of map ourselves a little bit. And we've talked that we've done this before, but I want to get maybe a little bit more in the weeds with it. <clears throat> and I'm not sure how this will go. I'm just gonna just try it try it off the top of my head. Um, So one of the main questions of what, what we're engaged with here, and one of the main questions of spirituality, and maybe one of the main questions of being a human being, is, is who am I? People love, people love to be told who they are, and there's a reason for that. It's because they've, they really want to know the answer. <laughs> uh, you know, um, psychologists they go to an astrology and they'll take little tests say which harry potter character they are and we want to know who we are we really care that we're a good person that we're an interesting person and in spirituality is one of the main questions the, the meditation is always about the present moment. So when we ask a question like, who am I? If from a meditative perspective, we're asking, well, who am I right now? Who can I contact right this second that is me, right? How can I get access to me now? Most of our answers, and we've talked about this many times, most of our answers in everyday life, like, who are you? Well, I do this job, or I was born here, or whatever, you know, whatever historical part of you that you would, you know, have memorized to tell people who you are, that will come up. <clears throat> if you want to think of it in an objective sense, it'd be like, well, what's the history of this body in time? But the history of this body is not accessible in this present moment. But you are, right? You're here. Whether you're listening on Facebook or in Zoom or, or this is a recording. You're here right now. But your history is not here. Your future is not here. But you are. And I think that there, it's fair to say that in an important sense, all of you is here right now. So if all of you is here right now, then and your history is not here and your future is not here, then those aren't really you. And that's sort of the meditative approach to figuring out who we are. Again, we can just assume that this is something people want. They want to know who they are. And so maybe worth talking about, but it's also, it, it's useful to know who you are. So our emotional life is all centered around <clears throat> protecting or providing for the I that we, the ego I that we have, we have established. Right. We're afraid when the I is threatened. We want to give the eye things that are good for it, that it wants. Right? When I say the eye, I mean like Kathy and Katya and Kamran and Nadine, like well, Chris, when I say, okay, wh what does Chris need? Right? <laughs> How do I protect Chris? How do I make Chris's life better? Those are all questions we ask ourselves, but we can't answer them until we know who Chris is or who Kathy is, or who Kamran is, or whatever. So it's actually, it is a, even in our normal everyday sense of living, it's a really important question to answer. Who, who am I really? And most of our suffering, if not all of our suffering, is related to the self as we've conceived of it, not getting what it wants. So if we found out that I, I, me, really, I really don't care about money, then, oh, my God, it's no longer a problem that I don't have any money. 
So our suffering is tied into how we have conceptualized ourselves. That makes sense, right? So when you say, who am I? There's a, there is a answer that you're carrying around and your suffering is tied into which answer you have. And there's some things that we share in most of our answers, like most of us don't want to die, right? And that's sort of like, oh, that's part of, that's part of myself, but we think of it as part of yours. And that's because it's part of our biological inheritance to try to be, to, to, to survive. And so we think that's part of ourself. And we, we, you know, most of us share that. But then there's things that are very specific to us. I, I, Kathy wants to make a great painting and Katya wants to make a great piece of writing and Kamran wants to teach an amazing class and Nadine wants to take care of her kids and whatever. I'm, those are the first things that came to mind. I'm not trying to stare, you know, pigeonhole any of you. So we do these activities, although we write down our goals, we write down our plans, we write down our memories, we write down our dreams, we, we ask people what they think of us, we ask other people what other people think of us, we go to professionals, right, we take, we take self-identifying quizzes, we, um, we look at ourselves in the mirror, right, we look at ourselves in pictures, we take pictures of ourselves, we're, we're, we're constantly trying to get some grasp on who the heck am I? We look at our teaching evaluations. We, we hear comments about our painting. We ask for comments on our writing, right? We, so on, right? What were those things that are close to us? I look at reviews of my movies, right? Those kinds of things. You're going, okay, how am I, how, how am, how, who am I and how am I doing? But you have to answer the first question before you can answer the second question. And then I come, so I come back. The everyday life, we're doing all those things to answer the question, but the meditative answer to the question is to look right now it's not to do any of the things I just listed. It's to look right now and go, who am I? I'm all, I'm all, I'm 100% here. Where am I? What am I? Who am I? So that's the direct path, right? Directly going to like, right this second, who am I? So we're going to do a little of the indirect path today. Mindfulness could be a way of that, where we just sort of observe all the things going on in our present moment, and we start to notice that, oh, well, that's not me, and that's not me, right? So we start to indirectly eliminate the things that we are not. In um, It's called neti neti in, in India. Um, not this, not that. So it's a practice of sort of going through the world and noticing, oh, well, I'm not that. Well, I'm not that. And we've talked about this, right? Observing your mind, you start to realize, well, if I can observe it, I'm not that. Observing your emotions, you start to realize, well, if I can observe it, then I am not that, at least not wholly. You start to observe your body, you go, oh, well, if I can observe it, then I am not that. I am the thing that observes, right? And that's part of the net neti neti practice. And it can be built into mindfulness where we're just sort of constantly witnessing what's happening to us, the external world, but also our internal emotion and mind. And slowly we are disidentifying with the things we're observing because we're realizing that well, I'm the observer, I'm not the, the thing observed. I've talked about this many times, so I'm going through it a little bit quickly right there because I want to go into the concrete elements of this. But, you know, if you're just listening to this on, on the video for the first time, you know, you can go back and look at some other videos or, or send me a question.
So I want us to go backwards and think of ourselves in our normal sense of the word. And just say, for instance, where were you born? And then say in your head, I was born wherever you were born. I was born in Bloomington, Indiana. So we're going to use mindfulness now to explore the map of ourself. So I was born in Bloomington, Indiana. So first of all, we notice that there's just a phrase in our mind. It's just a sound, right? It's just a sound. It's a series of words in my, in, of sentences. Now, you are not a series of sentences. You know that. You're not a series of words. You know that. Well, I was born in Bloomington, just a sound. But I also noticed there is a little bit of warmth. I actually really have some other fond feelings about Bloomington because my, where my grandparents were and I went to college there. So I can notice that there's some emotional connection to the sentence. Now you might not have that. You might notice, oh wow, I have no emotional connection to where I was, so this sentence just drops away, right? It doesn't matter. But there might be. And if I were to, one way you can check this is if I were to tell you, uh, I, uh, where was our, do I know where any of you were born? I don't really know where any of you were born. No. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> but if I said you were not born wherever you were born, so actually say that to yourself. I was not born wherever you were born. Say that in your mind and see how you emotionally react to that. Now, when I say see how you emotionally react, I mean, feel in your body if your body tenses or, or energy rises or heat rises or something gets cold or something gets numb when you reject this fact you've said about yourself. So I was not born in Bloomington, Indiana. And I can't name it at all, but there's some energy that moves through when I say that. There's a little bit of like a little tension. Now, these are just two series of words, right? I was born in Bloomington. I was not born in Bloomington. There's, there's only one syllable difference. Now, is the town where you were born like maybe you're in the town you're born, but it's not like present right now. You're just in a room. There's no, there's no way for you to tell right now where you were born. So what I'm going to ask you to do is just sort of start to loosen your hold on this and let go of this fact. When I say let go, and we've talked about this many times, when I say let go, I don't mean re we, we just tested rejecting the fact to sort of feel how our body responds, but you don't have to reject it anymore. Now you're let go, letting go of both sides of the fact. You're letting go whether you were born there or not. You're just letting go of it. If you forgot it, if you forgot that fact, would you still be you? You would, <laughs> right? There might be, might be some different behaviors, but if you just forgot that fact, you'd still be you. So what we're doing is just, we're not, but we're not forgetting it. We're just showing that it's okay to let go of it, to not hold on to it. In fact, to say, well, it's not me. That fact is not me. I'm going to keep pushing on this one. We're going to go through a lot more sentences, but we just, I'm, I'm trying to figure a way in to show you how to get free of these narratives. And this is a very minor fact about ourselves for most of us. It's not something that, you know, we think about very often, right? It's not something that's really that important to anything that's going on in the present moment. It may have some causal history, with where we are, we have arrived. So we tried saying it and we felt what was going on in the body. 
The words are not us because we can hear them. The feelings in the body are also not us. We can feel them and observe them. We tried saying the opposite of the sentence to notice if there was any feeling that arose. But again, those feelings are also not us. We can just observe them in the present moment and we can hear the sentence in the present moment. Then I've suggested, well, can we just let go of this? What do I mean? I mean, let go of our identity with it. So here's another way of putting that. You are not the person, you are not the being that was born where you were born. <clears throat> right now, you are not the being that was born where you were born. One reason for the Nisargadatta would say you, you're, you're birthless. You've never been born. Do you remember your birth? I suspect most of you do not. So it's just hearsay that you were born where you were born. Someone told you. Now, maybe they're right, but it's sort of like it's just you're made, you've tied into your identity now something that somebody has told you about yourself. It's not something you've directly experienced. It's certainly not something you're directly experiencing now. So I'm really pushing on this. Can you start to loosen? Like, okay, well, yeah, can you? There can really be an experience with just one sentence like, can you be free of this fact about yourself? It doesn't mean to say it's false. It means to be free of it. When you're free of it, if someone says you were not born in Bloomington, Chris, you're like, okay. Yeah. You probably can't get totally free of it, even this sentence, but maybe you can, but you can start to taste it. It's just a sentence. I was born, but da da ba da all right, I want you to pick another thing about your childhood, but something that's really not that emotional. Um, I'm going to try and think of something that's sort of just abstract. Um, yeah, pick, pick like your second grade teacher's name, but not if that teacher really was important to you. Pick another teacher that wasn't that important to you, if it was the second grade teacher wasn't important. It was like my second grade teacher, I think it was Mr. Fred. I went to one of those schools where we use the first names. So it was Mr. Fred. <clears throat> and again, so when I started thinking of the school, I do have some emotional content to it. Um, but Mr. Fred is just a, I don't, I can remember he had a beard. I remember almost nothing else about it, right? Again, just notice what emotion arises when you say, oh yeah, my second grade teacher was Depending how old we are, that was a long time ago. Probably haven't thought about them 10 times in the last 20 years or 15 years. You know, like it's not something that is very important in your everyday life. But notice there's still some emotion around going, that's my second grade teacher. Maybe you don't notice anything, then that's fine. But if you feel into your body, you'll notice, oh, yeah, my history is like, I do really have a little bit of warmth or, or coldness, whatever, a little bit of something in response to my history, because I'm holding on to it. Now, maybe you've forgotten who your second grade teacher is, and that would be actually an example of what I'm talking about. There may be a, there may be a teacher in your grade school you forgot which one they were, right? That'd be an example of, look, that fact disappeared, and you're still you. So here's another way of putting this. On the third day of second grade, 
your second grade teacher said something to you. It's probably true. You don't remember that, right? Nobody remembers that. So are you free of that? Whatever that person said, are you free, totally free of what your second grade teacher said to you on your third day of second grade? Yes, you are totally free of that as far as you can tell. So the only difference between that and your second grade teacher's name is that you have some, some you've memorized your second grade teacher's name. Just like you might memorize the capital of, of Egypt. So again, can we let go of this fact about ourselves? Letting go does not mean forgetting or denying. You can test the denying if you want, but we release our identity with it. We are not identical to our second grade teacher's name. It's just part of our narrative history. The fact that it brings up emotion in us, if it does, that's also, we are not identical to that emotion. Moreover, that emotion is here now. Not, it's not coming from the second grade teacher's name. All right, let's try another one. Now, something more emotional from your childhood. Let's do positive things today. Something you really liked about your childhood. So what we're doing here is using mindfulness to map the boundaries of ourself. And then I'm just inviting you to let go of it a little bit. We're, we're going, we're starting at the very sort of periphery of ourself. And now I'm getting to something a little closer, something we like about our childhood. It'll feel a little closer to our emotional center. Okay, so I'm remembering a time I was at my grandparents' house and my uncle and I went, it was a storm and there was a tornado warning and my uncle and I went up to play Go, which is a board game. Uh, Everyone else went in the basement and we were like, we're not scared. And we went up and we played go in the living room while the storm raged around, right? So I just told a little story. And the emotion that's around it, I'm not rejecting the emotion, this is mindfulness. We're becoming awake to how our history is in our body. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? Can you notice in your body that you've brought up this story and then it's in your body? This is something to notice. The things that are closer to our identity have more resonance in our body. The things that are closer to the identity we hold on to have more resonance in our body. Sometimes good resonance, sometimes bad resonance, or should I say sometimes pleasant resonance or sometimes painful resonance. But either one means it's closer to our identity. The map, so we're mapping, right? We're mapping our identity. Now we do the same thing. So mindfulness allows us to let go of what's arising. We're just present with the physical experience, with the visual mental experience, the auditory experience of the remembering, whatever we're remembering. And although it's pleasant, we can let go of it. Letting go of it just means not controlling it, not trying to hold on to it, and noticing that we are not identical with it. It is just in a movement in our body. Again, this may be something you haven't thought about for years. So it's clearly not an essential part of your operating, your daily operating self. But because it's generating emotion, it clearly has some 
tendrils wrapped around your sense of identity. Okay, so let's go through some more. Let's do a little history of our childhood. We were born here. We went to grade school here. And if it's multiple places, you can say that. We went to high school here. Our first partner, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever type of partner you had was whoever. My, um, I graduated in this year. Telling a little story about ourselves to ourselves. Notice how random those facts are, but and yet does not. So what I want you to notice is as you as I generate those random facts about your child, do you not feel a self kind of arising? Do you notice that? It's 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 a story, and those are random facts. But because you're so intimate with the with the person in the story, it's bringing up other stuff, probably other pictures of yourself feelings in the body. Now we're starting to get a little map. The map is getting a little more robust. Again, I'm using very silly little phrases, but if you start to feel, if you yearly use mindfulness right now, you can feel a self being generated. Doesn't it have more three-dimensional reality now? And I want you to observe that. Right. So while you're observing that, that means you are not that reality. So it's happening in the body. So you observe what's happening in the body. It's happening in pictures and they might be sort of amorphous and sort of subtle and maybe auditory phrases like the ones I generated or others. But there's a, it's like we're watching a three-dimensional, a sculpture being created. It's a mental emotional sculpture but we're watching a mental emotional sculpture being created of a self. Now, if I told you the five things or six things, or whatever I said of my life, it would be a much, um, it would be a much emptier sculpture, right? Because you wouldn't know how to fill in all the gaps. It would be a little bit of a sculpture. You'd be like, okay, he, he went to that grade school, but the grade school doesn't mean anything to you. And, and the name of my first, the first person I dated doesn't mean anything to you. And the, you know, when I graduated doesn't mean, right. It wouldn't have, it would be a very empty sculpture. But for you, those phrases start to, because you can lay more stuff on that scaffolding. And now I'm asking you to let go of that. Now, letting go does not mean rejecting it. It means not holding on to it. Step, it's kind of, one way is to step back and just observe. Oh yeah, there's this self I'm creating. <clears throat> and if you really sit with that, lots of little memories will come up, right? I'm picturing this place and that place and, Right. Because they're because they're all tied in with each other. And that's why there's a sort of that's why a sculpture can be created, because you have a, a web of facts that are bound together by emotion. To say that's a me. Now, the, the real crux is here is, can you let go of that? Letting go means, in this moment, all it means is not trying to control it, not trying to hold on to it, not trying to get rid of it, and then noticing that you are not identical to this sculpture. 
you're observing it. Most of it is just memory. It's 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 almost it's fabrication, right? It's a painting. If you did a painting, an abstract painting of your childhood, it would be a beautiful painting, but it wouldn't be you. It wouldn't be identical to you. Right? So what we're doing now is a sort of abstract mental, emotional painting, sculpture of our childhood, young adulthood. And we're just letting it happen. It's already there. We're not really doing it. They were just letting it going, oh, this is something I carry around with me. But it is not me. Again, most of the time I'm not thinking about any of this stuff. Most of it is not present in my present moment. Okay, so we'll try another way of getting free here. I want you to really notice where you are in the room right now. To notice the walls, notice the colors in front of you. Notice your butt on the seat. Listen with your ears to the silence or the sounds in the environment. And I want to say, ask you, do you see that zero to 18 year old here? Right, that sculpture we just created is not here. That was just like a, a little movie we were playing in our head. It's actually not here. You can see, can you start to see how empty it is once you wake up to the present moment? You feel your breath. You taste your tongue in your mouth. Rub your hands together. You, you can feel the richness of this present moment and you can see how empty that little sculpture you made of your childhood is. Do you see what I'm saying? How when you actually pop into the present moment, even for just a second, it just sort of pops the, it, 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 it's like a fan blowing through a cloud of your memory. All right, now maybe that'll give you a taste of the freedom I'm talking about, the freedom from that identity. Okay, so we were going, that's easy. That's all memory, that's, that's childhood. I mean, there's obviously big traumatic things that might not be so easy in there. We're trying to sort of stay away from them. Well, we can do the same thing about now. If I asked you, okay, who are you now? What is your job or career or passion? That also will be a sentence you say in your head. Oh, I am a writer, teacher, painter, mother grandmother father son okay so that's a sentence again we can hear the words in our head but it's just a sentence notice again what happens in the body when you bring up that identity well, I'm a filmmaker. What happens in your body when you say you're, you're this identity? Now let's actually do this again. Let's remember the best memory you have of this identity. So if you're a, a teacher, your best teacher memory. If you're a writer, your best writer memory. If you're a dancer, your best dancer memory. If you're a parent or a, whatever identity you just brought up, just add in a little memory. So now we're going to get a little bit more emotion, good, emo positive emotion, hopefully. So we're creating another little sculpture now, right? It's the sculpture of this identity, your job identity. It's a mental, emotional sculpture. You can feel it in your body. There's some images that are amorphous or maybe sharp in your mind. There's the phrase of the identity in your head and maybe other sounds that could go along with that identity. 
if for instance, I was winning an Oscar, I might be hearing the crowd cheering or something, right? I have never won an Oscar. And we're being mindful now. So mindfulness means we're observing what's happening in the body purely as a physical experience. We're observing what's happening in the mind and we're letting that go. We're allowing it to be there as it is. We're no longer trying to control it. We made a little effort here to sort of generate this memory and now we're letting it go. We can notice we are observing this memory sculpture being ari arising, but we are not identical to it. We are the observer of it. Now, do you all have a feeling about this identity? Do you sort of feel this identity in your bones a little bit? And there could be, there's some positive, there could be some nervousness or anxious, or any identity we have has protection and defenses around it. So it might not all feel good. That doesn't matter. That's, that's to right now, that's what our identity is. It's built around desires, good and bad. And you can feel this identity. It's a real thing in terms of experientially. Like you can really experience a sense of identity. And now I want you to do the same thing again. I want you to come back to the present moment. And I want you to see how much of that identity is here in this room. Look out and see the walls and see the paintings and see the bed and see the whatever is in your room. Hear what you're hearing coming from the computer, but also out in the, the environment, the silence in the room. See the vibrancy of the color. Put your hands together. Feel the vibrancy of your hands. Taste your tongue in your mouth. Feel the breath coming in your body. Feel your butt on the seat. Come into this present room. And do you feel that identity evaporate? The I am a teacher identity. You're not a teacher right now. There's nothing here going on like that, right? It's just evaporated. You, are you a painter right now? You are not a painter right now. It just evaporates when you come into the present moment. This sculpture you've created evaporates. You, if you get this, you start to taste a freedom. Oh, wow, I can be free of my teacher identity. I can be free of my mother identity. I can be free of my whatever identity. The second I'm in the present moment. Now, again, maybe it's just a taste for you, but maybe you're really noticing this. These identities we carry with us but when we become mindful to them, we see, oh, they're just feelings and sounds and they're just mind and emotion pictures. And they're so empty when you compare them to the present moment, the vibrancy of the present moment. When you notice you are here, you're hundred percent here, but your identity just evaporated. That one identity we were talking about just evaporated. You can notice now, this is the method of neti neti. This is the method of going through our identities and seeing, oh, they're all like this. The same thing about your hopes and dreams for the future. We could do that right now. I really want the future or I'm really scared the future. One of those two things is gonna be like this. So now you're going to notice, so, you know, I really hope I'm going to make, the, we're writing a movie now. I really hope that movie is going to get made, right? You can do the same thing for yourself. I hope this movie is going to get made. And there's emotion in there. And some pictures of vague pictures of what that might look like. You could sort of ask, why do I want it to get made? And that would give you some more robustness to like what it is you really want from the thing you're saying you're, you're aiming for or that you're afraid of? Why am I afraid of it? Why do I want it? Now you're generating a new identity. It's this identity with the goal. It's an identity that has a hope or a fear. It has an identity that's living partially in the future. We become mindful of how this identity lives in us. Where is it in our body? What pictures is it generating in the mind? What sounds is it generating in the mind? 
the mindfulness allows us to be present with and see, ah, this is how this identity is created. It creates sensations in my body and pictures in my mind. I am not identical to this identity because I can observe it. I am the observer of this identity. This observer is the same observer of this present moment. And then we can shoot, move into the present moment and go, oh, yes, I'm the observer of this colors. I'm the observer of the sounds. I'm an observer of these feelings in my body that are not this identity. And that identity becomes empty. It's, it, was just some, it was just some feelings in the body. There's other feelings in the body going on right now. They're just as important, which isn't important at all. And for a second, you might be free of your fears, free of your desires. Free does not mean you don't have them. That doesn't mean they won't come back or they won't operate, but you are not identical to them. On your deathbed, what are you going to still be holding on to? If you're not holding on to anything, you'll have nothing to fear. As we meditate, we get subtler and subtler identities. For instance, there could be the identity of being a spiritual person who is going to be free of all identities, right? That could be an identity too. And you can feel that. You can go, okay, I will be enlightened. All right. Well, say the phrase, I'll be enlightened your body, mind. Hear the feeling in your body. Notice, sorry, feel the feeling in your body. Notice what pictures generate from this spiritual identity. Notice again, that spiritual identity is just a pattern of sensations in your experience. It's not real. Once you're free of all these things, then you can just be them. You can just play the game of being a painter or a teacher or whatever without it weighing you down. So we're going to do one last one before we meditate. What is that thing you're suffering from most right now? And say, I am suffering from. Okay, so the phrase is in your head, and that's just a sound. I am suffering from, just a sound in your head. Notice what pictures arise when you generate that phrase. I'm suffering from, and then there might be a picture of what it is you're suffering from. An image of you suffering, or an image of the thing happening, or an image of you being in a fear, or whatever it is. And we notice what arises in the body. I am suffering from the pictures and the body's response to this talk about, we're just thinking about the thing I'm suffering from. We are generating an idea and we're generating an identity, which is the sufferer. It's right, because that's what identity means. It's me who's suffering from this, right? That's what we believe. That's otherwise we wouldn't be suffering. So it's me who is suffering from this. So here I am. This is the sufferer. Okay, I'm really sit with this. We're not trying to get rid of it. We're being mindful of it. 
We're becoming awake to it. Okay, this is the sufferer. This is what the sufferer feels like. This is what the sufferer looks like. This is what the sufferer sounds like. If you want, because of, the, because of the, the difficulty with suffering, you can even name some of the emotions if they're coming up. Just to really be awake to it. Oh, yeah, this is the suffer. And oh, yeah, there is fear that comes up. Or there is sadness that comes up. Or there is grief that comes up. Or there's anxiety or whatever it is. Maybe there's not a name. Maybe it just feels awful in some way. You don't have to name it. it just, the naming is just a way of getting sort of a robust... Again, mental emotional statue that we're sort of we're sort of allowing to be to being um, sculpted into reality so we can be mindful of it and observe it. Now I, I, invite, I invite you to love this. Remember, mindfulness is love. We're lovingly being aware of the sufferer. The more lovingly we are aware of the sufferer, the more clear it can become that, oh, we are the one that loves the sufferer. We are the one that is observing the sufferer. We are the one that is caring for the sufferer. We are the one that is curious and noting and experiencing the sufferer. But we are not the sufferer. We are not identical to the sufferer. We are the observer of the sufferer. That word is really hard to say. We are the observer of that one that suffers. That observer of the one that suffers is also the one that we open our eyes, that sees the walls, that sees the room, that sees the colors. The one that observes the sufferer is also the one that can feel my hands rubbing against each other, feel the seat beneath us, that can smell the room or can hear my voice or the, or the silence or the outside world. The one that observes the sufferer, the one that is real, the one that is really you can come into the present moment and the sufferer is empty. You can let go of the sufferer. That doesn't mean to get rid of the sufferer. That might person that that person might stay around for a while, of course. But we don't have to be identified with it. And the less the the, the more attenuated our identity becomes with it, the less suffering there will be. This is why we practice mindfulness and this is why we practice presence. So this could be really hard for you, depending how intense the suffering is. And the harder it is, the more you want to really drop into present moment experience, like really seeing the colors in the room and just staying with them or really feeling the breath in your nose and just staying with them because the grip of the sufferer may really be pulling you back into it so that you live inside of it rather than step outside and observe it. That's totally normal. But that's why we practice presence, presence, presence. Here's the breath. Here's the breath. So we can start to notice that the observer is not the same thing as the thing observed and that the suffering is a thing that can be observed. And therefore, we are not identical to the sufferer. And therefore, we are not the sufferer. And therefore, the suffering is not real. It does not have to be real. It not have to be experienced as real. All of our life is like this. It's empty. In a good way, it's we can be free of it. It doesn't have to weigh on us. We don't have to drag it with us. This moment, if we look, is free of the whole of your history. This moment, if you look, is free of the whole of your future. Let's sit. <laughs> 